Great. We'll so I will go ahead and call the third session of the T committee meeting to order for May 3rd, 2024. Um, consistent with um, past actions of the um, T committee, um, we will use a consent calendar format. We have the therapeutic classes offered by Optum regarding the Indiana Medicaid preferred drug list. Um, the classes are listed on the agenda and I would ask members of the T committee members, members of the T committee to extract classes that they would like to discuss further. Uh, this is Zach. I'd like to extract the agents for the treatment of opioid use disorder or overdose. Good. Okay. So that's A1. Any other classes? Um, so, um, looking at the consent calendar, um, we have Optum's recommendations on all of these um, classes. The one class that has been extracted from the consent calendar for further discussion is A1, Agents for the Treatment of Opioid Use um, Disorder or Overdose. Any other classes for the discussion or to be extracted? Okay. Um, I would invite a motion to approve the remainder of the consent calendar. So moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. As second. it's a recommendation from Optum, okay, <laughs> technically does not need a second, but um, I appreciate the second. Um, any further discussion regarding the remainder of the consent calendar? Hearing none, I would ask Amanda to do a roll call. All right, Dr. Shaw. Um, approve. Dr. Krupp. Approve. Dr. Marshall. Aye. Thank you. Mr. Musial. Aye. Dr. Negendank. Aye. Dr. Patel. Aye. And Dr. Weber. Aye. We have all ayes, so that motion will carry. Dr. Shaw, back to you. All right. Um, the uh, one class that was extracted from the consent calendar was A1, Agents for the Treatment of Opioid Use Disorder or Overdose. Um, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Weber, who extracted the class. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to, I think OMPP had mentioned that they might have some additional information or perspective around the use of the medications in this class. And I just wanted to give them the opportunity to share that information here during the third session. So OMPP, if you don't mind. Um, I just was going to say, I wanted to double check to make sure I hadn't um, missed anything. And I know that um, I had corresponded with um, Dr. Parker um, last year and um, uh, I asked him to provide us some specific examples, and he said he's going to do that. And I just never got any back from him. So we were, as always, we would be more than happy to look into specific cases. We have an exceptionally high approval rate um, for the subway case um, on the fee for service side, and I believe it's pretty comparable on the MCE side too. So hearing that there are these gaps, it would just be exceptionally beneficial if we could just have some examples of where something didn't work for you that we can look into that to see if it's on our end, we'll get it fixed. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to tell people no for no reason. Um, we want to, and the, I can tell you that the bar for getting to these agents, the longer acting ones, it's really just following the package insert and 
what's what's going on and all the doctor really has to say is pretty simple um I'm, there's a concern about something and you get an approval it's that's my experience with these and so that's what you're mentioning is out of alignment with my experience um, and i also do want to throw in that um we cannot speak to the circumstances in other states we do know that there are some states that were mentioned that have laws that mandate that they cover these without regard indiana does not um, so um, i don't know what the circumstances would be if those laws had not been enacted in those states but i think um, mentioning those states without that perspective kind of unnecessarily makes it look like we're the bad guy in the group where in essence um, they're just following the law that they have to but i can tell you that with regards to this, the, someone mentioned something about a, a level playing field. And the all of our manufacturers, in that group especially, it's a level playing field. It's just whether or not they're willing to play. And um, in some cases, they just want a new stadium and we can't afford that. So it's, it's not that the cost is the primary driver around of this. Um, on the subtle case slide, it's really um, just following the package insert. So, but we would love to make it free if we could have manufacturers that would play that same card because it's it's really easy for you guys to come in here and talk to us about this. And we take that and we're very concerned because these are our patients, these are our members, and that's what we think of them. But I don't know that anybody's ever sat in front of the board of directors of those companies and said the same thing to them. And it would really be refreshing to hear something like that. So um, I'm kind of passionate about this because I want to make sure that we're taking care of our members. And again, I can tell you, this group right here, we will work to find a yes for anything. Um, and it's really discouraging when we can't. Um, so again, give us those examples and we'll get to the bottom of it please he promise <laughs> uh, i he, he i, I threw it out to you uh, yeah, twice last summer and them. never got back with me yeah so you have to you have to do you have to meet us halfway yeah it, i mean it, it it's very you can't just make generalized statements that you can't back up so we're happy to research but you have yeah. you have to help us do that you give me a list the members that you've got to know on I will tell you why I will give you an exact reason why those no's occurred. And if those no's were inappropriate, then we'll make them yeses. I guarantee you that. Can I say one little thing? Absolutely. It's not a lot of pushback. Mm -hmm. So there were a couple instances, and I can tell you the payer sources. I don't have the names with me right now, mm -hmm. but it was an example where I got a no. Uh -huh. I had to do a peer to peer, which took time to set up, two mm -hmm. days to set up. Did the peer to peer the person on the other end of the phone said, Oh, I said, Did you read my app when you didn't send it? So now I'm looking at what we sent. Yeah. Again, so phone. what you're mentioning would be clearly an instance where if you would have sent that to me, I could have gotten to the bottom of that, but you never got back to me. You took you said, I'm, I'm going on vacation, I'll get back to you after vacation. Okay. I know I don't go on vacation. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's what you said in your email. So I can read it to you because I've got it. Because I was like, um, is this the same guy? Is this the same issue? It is. Because um, we corresponded, I think, three times. And I never got a final answer from you at all. So I'm willing to take a look at anything you want to give me. And I'll fix it when it's fixing. Guaranteed. Anything else, Dr. Weber, that you want us to address? No, that was it. I just wanted to make sure we we were able to, to get that perspective. So thank you for sharing it. And I'll just you know reiterate that we all have a common interest in, in trying to do our best to get access to these medications for our patients. And so if you have those examples, please send them over and and our colleagues at OMPP will, will certainly do exactly what they just promised and look into them and look for those opportunities to to make potential issues correct or obviously to look for any um, potential difficulties in the system itself. So um, so thank you OMPP and, and others for your common interest in continuing to pursue this and make this an opportunity that's as good as possible for our patients. And so um, with that, I will make a motion to approve the recommendation from Optum that was provided during the initial session. I'll second it. Can I uh, make a couple comments? Um, 
so I, I was just wondering, you know, there's two kind of things as we heard the testimony on this topic. One is about um, the appropriateness of using injectable buprenorphine as a first line uh, agent for treatment of opioid use, use disorder in, the, in that population. And the second issue seems to be around the PA process here with Vienna Medicaid specifically. So, you know, I think the first the first topic we, we, we have talked about, you know, we're going to do a little bit of diligence. We've asked uh, OMPP to really kind of see if there's any way to analyze kind of the total spend, um, whether it's hospitalizations and, and that type of stuff in addition to the medication costs. So we're working on that part. I think one thing that might be a little easier to ask, and Amanda and your team, like if you have any input on this, is that are we able to get some stats on the PA process for this class specifically in terms of uh, can we get the, what the average turnaround time is and what the denial or approval rate is for this class? Um, just so we have that documentation of, again, are we hearing exceptions or is this an ongoing trend in this class that we're unaware of? Um, I, I don't know if that's, that data would be easier for uh, Optum to, to kind of collate and, and present at the next meeting so we kind of see what that's like. Yeah, we'll bring that, we'll do that and we'll bring that back when, these, when this class is up again and, uh, at the six month mark. Yep, we'll be happy to do that. Thank you. And you, we regularly present the MOUD stat data to like the Mental Health Quality Advisory Board Committee, et cetera. So we, it, we'll have it pretty quickly for you. <clears throat> Dr. Shaw, I believe we have a motion and a second on the table. Did you want? But did yes. you have further discussion, or did you want me to go ahead and do the roll call? Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, talking to myself <laughs> over here. Um, so we have a motion, um, and which has been seconded, to approve Optum's recommendation regarding the agents for the treatment of opioid use disorder or overdose. Um, we've had a request from Dr. Patel for some additional information, um, and. Optum and OMPP have always been very transparent with um, data, um, so which is always appreciated. Um, any further discussion regarding the motion? Hearing none, I'll open up the roll call. All right, Dr. Shaw. Aye. Dr. Krupp. Aye. Dr. Marshall. Aye. I think I Aye. Been, oh, there you go. <laughs> Mr. Musial. Aye. Dr. Negendig. Aye. Dr. Patel. Aye. And Dr. Weber. Aye. All right, we have all ayes, so that motion will carry and is approved. So I believe that takes us to our next round of public comment. So if there is any public comment in the room or any other public comment in the um, online, if you could shoot a message in the chat or raise your hand. All right, I'm hearing and seeing none. So we will then move on to any other business from the committee. All right, hearing and seeing none, Dr. Shaw, that takes us to the last item on the agenda, which is adjournment. Yes, I'll go ahead and call the um, third session for the tea committee on May 3rd, 2024 to a close. I appreciate everyone's attendance and participation. Thanks everyone. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Good weekend everybody, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye guys.